IBM came out with it. Uh, it's Granite uh, Foundational Models. It uh, goes GA with that. And they added a level of protection for their customers. What's going on here, Dan? Um, well, you kind of said it already, but thanks. Uh, no, but uh, you and I have talked quite a bit about IBM Watson X. We've talked quite a bit about the, you know, it was kind of Watson X AI data governance. And now we've seen, you know, the company kind of further establish its approach, which is enterprise centric to act as market leaders in terms of what it's doing to enable. And Pat, did, did, did the word uh, d d democratize, further democratize? You can throw that out, dude, as much as you want. I'm just having a little fun here. Um, but further enable the enterprises to not only approach AI and data, but also drive governance. And the other thing that I liked about this announcement around Granite was really about the fact that we know increasingly, and this is what we keep saying about the sort of, uh, you know, proprietary data and its value versus commoditized large language models is that IBM from the very onset under, you know, the leadership of Arvind Krishna has understood it, that AI is not going to be the same for every company. And so, you know, these, this whole thing with Granite Models is all about being delivered in different sizes with different levels of customization so that companies can basically get to the specific needs and insights that they are looking for and not looking at every model kind of offering the same set of capabilities to every company. Um, IBM has further really, you know, added that it's not only going to focus on its own foundational models, but it's also going to open the door for third parties. So it's got Llama. It's got um, Hugging Face, which Pat, we've talked a lot more. It's funny because remember when Hugging Face was the name everybody always mentioned, and lately it's yeah. more coherent and anthropic, but it's really the three of those and then others. Um, and the other thing is that, you know, the company has come out now really explaining, you know, IBM has an immense and incredible, you like the word incredible, incredible set of data that it's been able to train models on. Um, you know, it's got, uh, they talk about their five domains, Pat, you know, academic, internet, code, legal, finance, but it is training and curating these models so that what people are starting with with Granite is something that's got a lot of what they need. But then, like you said, they're making it very open so you can add your proprietary data and you can do it in a way that includes the important governance um, so that you get the most and maximize the value and the return on your AI investments running Watson. This is what I've always liked about the Watson X strategy from the beginning was that it's enterprise centric, it's customizable, it's foundational model focused, and it's open both internally to what IBM has created, but also externally to the larger open source models that all seem to offer little bits of disparity in terms of their value. Uh, so you can bring together daisy chain stack to get the most uh, value. Pat, probably the biggest piece of news here, um, was something that we're hearing more and more about. And this is kind of what IBM referred to as its contractual protections for AI models. Um, given the fact that we know there's a lot of questions and concerns around AI, responsible AI governance, uh, privacy and data is that, you know, uh, how does intellectual property get protected um, when you're building this out, trying to do it very quickly and you're picking different horses, proverbially speaking, to which technologies you wanna use? Well, if you're using IBM, what they basically come out with in this announcement is they're providing IP indemnity or AKA contractual protection for the use of its foundational models. This allows it customers that are now uh, committing to working with IBM and Watson X to know for sure that what's being created, uh, that they are not going to get sued or have to deal with legal ramifications for leveraging IBM's foundational models. This is very important. Now, something that um, I think is always going to be the caveat is as these open source things get brought in external and internal models. So the protections, do they sit if you're using your data plus their data or do you have to use exclusively their foundational models? These are some of the questions I'm still kind of curious about. But I have to imagine it's set up in such a way that it allows for um, all, the, all the data, your own data plus the mo model data. Um, just as long as you're not using any data that's technically not your data. Um, but this, Pat, you know, was really big news. And I think this is going to be a fast following uh, announcement from IBM. where We're going to see others come out in this space aggressively offering something similar. But companies can be very fast and very dynamic and very efficient and very productive through the utilization of generative AI. But 
when we've seen some of the risk factors of data ending up in the wrong hands, models being trained on data that uh, isn't owned, uh, isn't protected, companies have to say, hey, if this information is going to get to our customers, if it's going to enable our, our users, customers, ecosystems, partners, vendors to interact with this data, and this data has in, in factually inaccurate or even hallucination or uh, ends up um, leading to a decision that costs uh, has a big financial downside, for instance, to a company, where does the accountability lie? And so this is a big step for IBM to basically say, we, we believe 100% in what we do. We are willing to back the customers that make this investment. Um, but it will be very interesting to see uh, kind of how this plays out. And if things like this, if Pat, if, if this contractual protection ever even becomes a thing, or if they're able to really bat yeah. a thousand in terms of making sure it's only the right data and only the right outcomes. I, I view this as a major milestone uh, for IBM, but also a good time to sit back and, and reflect on what the company has done in generative AI. Um, they were the one of the first to come out strong with a new generative AI platform with Watson X, three parts of that, AI, uh, uh, data, and the uh, basically the content protections. And IBM was first going GA. They, they, were, they were GA before Google, GA before Azure, GA before AWS. And uh, we talked about that uh, on the show. And I do think that counts for something, right? Where IBM may not, uh, you know, they were they were first with Watson and Health. Uh, I think overall stubbed their toe a lot. It was based on analytics, not machine learning. So it's probably the wrong technology. Uh, but but here they are, right? And I feel very comfortable. If you're a regulated, uh, uh, you're an enterprise regulated industry that IBM, uh, IBM has your back uh, on this. You know, if you want to train it, at IBM, they've got their own Vela supercomputer. And in fact, this is where uh, this specific uh, model was was trained, uh, granite, right? And the amount of information that they shared was really unprecedented. So OpenAI, neither OpenAI or Llama will tell you where they got their data from, okay? Um, so I think that is a little bit suspect. Uh, uh, to be honest, but I also understand that it's it could be also viewed as part of their intellectual property. Um, and, but if you go to the white paper, uh, you can you can actually see right there the fourteen sources that that IBM pulls this from, and then uh, they go through and other other people do that. They, they talk about how much data they started with, which was six point four terabytes of data took out 4.9 of dedupe, uh, 3.79 uh, terabytes of hatred, abuse, and profanity, which left you with a two terabyte model that's ready uh, for tokens. So the amount of detail is extraordinary here. And I think IBM uh, should be uh, applauded for this. By the way, the, the other thing is when you get it, when you get the data set down to a meaningful, a smaller data set, guess what? the cost to do inference against it is is less expensive and, and that's a good thing i think this is also a really good model and you know by the way this is not a this is not a tiny model right it's 13 point billion uh parameters but it's not this you know gigantic uh monolith that uh, that that i think uh, we've we've seen before the other thing that i like pricing there's freaking pricing right on the website Right, this is point uh, zero zero five dollars per one thousand tokens. Where have you seen pricing before on a website? I haven't seen it anywhere. I'm sure the salespeople have it, and they're selling it, but it's right there uh, uh, on uh, on the website. Uh, the final thing, a little twist up uh, on the indemnity, just just to give you an idea how how far uh, this is from other uh, things. When you use Llama, Daniel, you have to sign a document indemnifying Meta, <laughs> okay, from being sued as part and partial to a lawsuit against you. So, uh, but here IBM is actually, 
you know, uh, you know, not guaranteeing a win, but guaranteeing that uh, they're going to pay for your uh, legal bills. On this. That's the that's the whole thing about like an, a real enterprise solution versus a consumer toy, right? You know, keep going. The the just fixing my uh, earpiece. Yeah. It's fine. I was just saying the big difference between a toy, a consumer product, and an enterprise product is, you know, if you want an enterprise to, you know, it's 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 kind of like, you know, an ERP or any other solution. You want them to go big with your enterprise solution. You better be willing to back that your stuff works. Yeah. You know what I mean? And this, unfortunately or fortunately, because it works at such a pace, there is literally no way to validate and fact check every single one of these generated assets at scale. So if you can't do that and you can't guarantee it, you can't use it. Yeah. So it, it's really, this is kind of like setting the standard. It's a bit of a requirement. I don't see how it isn't a requirement going forward that these companies are going to say, look, we, and we commit that what we're creating, generating is right. Yeah. And listen, I'm just going to throw this out there. Um, you know, I asked AWS what um, their list of sources uh, through their models were, and they said they don't share that that information for for Titan. So it's going to be interesting, folks, right? Uh, and by the way, public indemnification of an entire program doesn't mean that special people aren't being indemnified. I'll, I'll just throw that out there as well.